child of the century. In a matter of moments, we are about to witness the most impressive clash of legal minds this courtroom or this country has seen since once upon a time. After years of delay, we are about to witness the trial of the big, bad wolf. As many know already, Mr. Wolf, the defendant, escaped the jail sentence at his criminal trial <coughs> for three counts of pumping and puffing with intent to destroy, two counts of attempted murder by ingestion, one count of grandmother impersonation, four counts of attempted sheep abduction, and seventeen counts of lurking ended in a mystery. The result of a giant falling in the jury room as they were determining the verdict. Now a number of parties have brought a class action lawsuit against Mr. Wolf in an attempt to obtain some monetary consolation for what they feel has been an infringement on the rights of the now defendant. Ah, uh, it seems the counsel for the plaintiffs, the unequal Miss Fairy Godmother, accompanied by Miss Fairy in this force that have saved him from the hands of criminal justice. As you know, I have always fought to trace that the good people of this force get the any danger. That one's gonna get it. We're gonna stream up by his toes and JK, all two of his money goes right here. And then me and Granny are gonna get ourselves a nice new condo with a pool and uh... <laughs> now dear, have a seat. That is not appropriate for television and we don't want to waste anyone's time. We can't have this problem forever, you know. This is all with his clips. I'll turn to my Many heinous acts. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you 
my drink. And then when I got too to the bed, he ate me. Ate you to consumption of a live human being. An obvious deprivation of one's basic rights. Oh, it was terrible until Mr. Cutter got us out of there. It was so dark and clammy and acidic in there. It sounds horrible. <laughs> Yes. In fact, is it not part of the 
what kind of code that you must respond to and some people in need? It is part of the code, and I pulled that part of the code. So in other words, when you encounter an emergency in the woods, you are obligated to respond quickly and courageously. Yes. And so you did so. You are a true hero, sir. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> no further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> examine the witness, Mr. Wood. Mm. Thank you. Now, Mr. Woodcutter. Hmm. Let's talk about this Woodcutter's code, shall we? Okay. How do you know when there's an emergency in the woods that you need to respond to? Well, usually if I see something that looks wrong, I respond to it. <laughs> I see. So, you see it, now do you? Well, now, Mr. Woodcutter, would you care to tell me what prompted you to go into Ms. Hood's cottage that day? I'm seeing nothing in the police report about going to the house. Did you hear a scream? Well, uh, no, not exactly. Did you see the defendant in the house <coughs> suspicious? No, I, uh, okay. I was snooping around the house. Snooping? <laughs> Whatever for? <laughs> I was looking for a pie to steal off the window, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see. And why would you do that? I thought you were a hero. Couldn't win no pay so good. That's why I do the pageants. But you only make big money if you win first prize. I haven't done that yet. I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so, while you were trying to steal something, you saw from the window what exactly? I saw that there wolf right there lying in the old lady's bed in her clothes licking his chops. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. Tell me though, how'd you know? I mean, absolutely know for sure that Mr. Wolf had eaten your friends and you were justified in cutting him open because that is what you did, isn't it? You cut my client open with an ax, didn't you? Yes, yes I did. How'd you know? I mean, Absolutely not for sure, Mr. Woodcutter. Couldn't Mr. Wolf have been a friend of Mrs. Hood you didn't know? One who occasionally liked to dress up in her nightgowns? How did you know, how did you know he had eaten them and the two women weren't sticking in the other room? Well, he's a wolf. So you just cut him up because he's a wolf, eh? Well, yeah. No other reason. No. No further questions, John. <laughs> 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 Miss Gosling, any more witnesses? Another story of cross examination by stepmother. This is interesting. Shut up. <laughs> Why don't we go to Marcel? I caught the three little pig. Objection! You can call three witnesses at once. Your Honor, it is essential to my case that the witnesses be caught at one time. It is? <laughs> yes. Well, why is that? Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Well, this is unorthodox. Not so this planet to burn us. <laughs> what is it? They're, um, amateur. No, you can say it. They're stupid. <laughs> 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 Oh, no, 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 no,
Well, I suppose so. This man's testimony is essentially hearsay, Your Honor. Hmm, I see. Well, why are you still talking to him? You're excused, Mr. Shepard. <laughs> Does the counsel for the plaintiffs have any further witnesses? Um, no. Miss Stepmother? Yes. The defense would like to call a surprise hostile witness. The defense calls the boy who cried wolf. <laughs> Come along, you Oh, man. boy, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be good. Oh, sure. oh, never mind. Like I said, come along. What? I don't want to. I'm afraid you must, son. <laughs> well, Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Hans Christian Anderson. I guess so. <laughs> Very well, young man. Tell us something. Did you ever, on any day, see a wolf in the field? Yeah, the third day, just like the old guy said. All right, and why did you pretend on the other days? Because I thought it'd be funny. It was. You should have seen the look on their stupid faces. <laughs> <laughs> Are you certain that the wolf you saw was my client? Yeah, I guess. I mean, they all look the same to me, those wolves. Oh, I see. And I'm just wondering why, specifically, did you cry wolf rather than something else on the days when you saw no wolf? Well, because everyone knows wolves are bad. Big and bad, you know? Oh, so wolves are naturally bad. Yup. But not little boys? What are you driving at, lady? Are you aware that a quick emergency calls a crime, young man? Huh? Yeah, sure. Someone's always trying to spoil my fun. So you knew you were breaking the law when you cried wolf? Heck yeah! <laughs> but, but, but wolves are naturally bad? Listen, I don't need this from you, lady. No further questions, Your Honor. The witness is excused. Miss Stepmother, any more witnesses? Don't you mean Miss Godmother? Don't get us mixed up. Of course, Miss Godmother. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, I don't think so. Well, you sure of something? You know, my friend, things might not be as bad as we thought. Yeah, sure. I need another witness. <laughs> I'd like to call an expert witness to the stand. The renowned psychiatrist, Miss Muffin. She's the top wolf specialist in the field. Years of hands on experience in the deep, dark woods. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Pond Christian Anderson. <laughs> I don't like swearing. <laughs> um, I'm afraid you must, Miss Muffin. Oh, alright. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You may be seated. Oh, um, no. You mean? I, uh, I need a, uh, tuppet. Oh, what? A tuppet, sir. She needs a tuppet. Oh, right, a tuppet. Well, son of a fetch me a tuppet. I don't think anyone knows what that is. Oh, thank heavens, neither do I. <laughs>
tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, Hans Christian Andersen. I do. Mr. Wolf, why don't we keep this brief? Very well. Why don't you just tell the court about what you have to say about all this? Yes, I'd like to. I'm not sure where to begin. I, well, have only a few words, but here goes. When I was just a cub, I lived a pretty carefree life. I stayed in the cave mostly and played with my brothers and sisters. And Mother brought us home to me every night for dinner. One day, Mother brought home something different, a human baby. We raised the baby as one of our own, and I loved my sister like she was a wolf herself. Then, one day, she returned to her people, and I never saw her again. I swore that I did always love and protect creatures and other species, and I swore off the usual activities of wolf and it became a vegan. <laughs> then, one day, when I was looking for dandelions in the field of sheep, a boy began to cry out, Wolf! Wolf! He's taking the sheep! He's going to eat me! I saw the human rage! How could this boy suspect me of doing exactly what I'd sworn never to do? I yelled at him, trying to tell him I was a good wolf, but the more I yelled, the angrier I became. In a blind rage, I took the sheep and scared him half to death. I ate those sheep that night. After that, I tried to put my wits together and go back to my own ways, but... Every time I encountered a creature of another species, he or she would run from me, distrust me, scream, or something of the sort. I never meant to hurt anybody. But gradually, I didn't know how else to interact, interact with the world. I admit it. I've done all the things I've been accused of. I can only ask that if for once, if you take pity, if you have mercy, maybe, maybe I'll be able to stop. That's all, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Thank you. Very well. I wonder where Miss Muffet went. <laughs> Don't you think I asked or something? Because, um, yeah. Stop the trial! Stop the trial! As I was sleeping, I saw the television. Live broadcast! My brother! <laughs> what? <laughs> the courtroom was thrown into chaos here today as renowned psychiatrist Miss Muffet revealed her true identity as the human as the adopted human sister of the accused. Miss Perry Godmother delivered a brief closing statement in which she restated facts brought up by her witnesses. Miss Stepmother for the defense informed the jury that Mr. Wolf had shown that he had not simply been born a criminal, but made one because the society in which he lived viewed him as such. And if the jury were to show some compassion, the first he'd ever known, his ways may begin to change. Now we'll take you back to the courtroom where the jury had to deliver its verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give us a verdict, but they haven't even left the room yet. We don't have time for that. No much jury duty. I know. I always wish they'd get on with it. All those lawyers yakking away, all those witnesses crying, and those judges. <laughs> don't even get me started. You're not going to settle out to deliberate? No. We'll just have them clap. It's much easier. Don't you think? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give us some words of wisdom. Words that may impart along the way. A wise philosopher would say, Juries are like submarine sandwiches, messed with mayo and hobbies. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? No matter what happens, I just want to say thanks. You know, kid, I'm glad I got dragged into this case. I think I know where you're coming from. I need to talk to my stepdaughter. Ladies and gentlemen, when I raise my gavel, I would like everyone who believes in the <laughs> oh, guilty with a G. And <laughs> the defendant is guilty with a G. I would like you to applaud as loudly as you can when I raise my gown.